Welcome to another edition of Around the Town with Hez Brown. And now your host, Hezekiah Brown. Hello, and welcome to the premiere edition of Around the Town. This bi-weekly community affairs show will present issues and information that affects you. If you have any comments or ideas for a future show or topic, reach us on the WRVS 89.9 Facebook page or on Twitter using hashtag around the town. Now, let's get to the conversation I had with my special guest, 2017 Elizabeth City Mayor candidate, Miss Betty J. Parker. We are just delighted to have with us today uh, Ms. Betty Parker, who is a candidate for mayor of Elizabeth City. And we're extremely happy because this is not an interview. This is really a conversation. I think at the end of this uh, conversation, you will know a little bit more about the candidate. Ms. Parker, you know, we just thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to come by. You know, you know uh, uh, Ms. Parker, you know, one of the things about running for office is the fact that, you know, your whole life really is on the line. <laughs> your bio is out there every every single day. And sometimes they're right in the bio and sometimes they're wrong. Uh, could you just tell us a little bit about um, who Betty Parker is? You're married, you're single. Uh, <clears throat> just give us a little overview of or who this candidate is that's running for mayor? Well, I am Betty Jones Parker. Usually I just say Betty J. Parker. Uh, I am married and uh, to Melvin Parker. Uh, I have two children, Indy and Marcel, and I have three beautiful grandchildren. Uh, I guess I feel it sound a little partial there. Uh, Chantel, Dayana, and Sydney. Um, I am a retired high school mathematics teacher, uh, and uh, as you know, I uh, am presently a Pascatank County Commissioner at large, Um, but um, just me as a person, I just like working with people, and I like serving them, actually, in whatever capacity that I can, uh, and trying to make a difference. Uh, I just think I continue to have the uh, strength physically and mentally to persevere to through the busyness of um, uh, of being uh, doing what you need to do in order to be an elected official. Mm, great. You, you know, the I worked in the political arena all my life. I believe I've been involved over close to 50 years in the political arena, uh, obviously not here. <laughs> In Elizabeth City, only on a small scale, but that was what I was doing uh, for a lot of years in New York. And uh, I know that when you decide to take a position, it's a transitional period that you must go through. I'm trying to figure out, how did you make the transition from a teacher (laughs) to a politician? (laughs) You know, I'm still figuring, trying to figure that one out myself. Uh, But as I said, I've always worked with people. Uh, And I never really kept up with politics uh, per se until President uh, Barack Obama uh, started running for the presidential office. Um, Actually, I kept up with him the entire time when he was running. Uh, And that's when I really uh, started paying attention to politics. He actually was my motivator. Um, I saw that uh, being in office or running for office, that it is doable to be elected, whether or not you are uh, a first-timer or whether you are a a career person at it. Uh, So uh, I wanted to kind of follow in his pathway uh, or in his his path because he's paved a way uh, wherein it it has given quite a number of us confidence that um, it is doable to seek an office. Uh, Of course, his was the highest office and be successful. Mm -hmm. So you took him into advice. You know, he said that if you're dissatisfied, go out and get some signatures and run for office. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Yes. Yes, I did. I did not actually get signatures. What I did was, first of all, my husband was the one that says I, I was sitting around it, and, and I, as I said, I started getting involved in uh, watching the um, 
uh, po- watching politics and, and as it evolved on television and listened on radio. And uh, he's the one that said, well, you, you all talk, you're always talking about uh, where they should do this and, and this would probably work. And uh, he, he says, why don't you run? <laughs> I said, I don't think so. But then uh, there was uh, one of my former teachers, um, Mr. Cecil Perry. He was a mathematics teacher. And uh, I, of course, uh, went on to be a mathematics uh, teacher as well. Uh, He called me and asked me if I would consider running for a position that was open for Pascatank County Commissioner at large. And, you know, it's very seldom that you say no to your teachers, whether they're still your teachers or a former teacher. Yes, I, I know that um, when you ran for office, uh, I guess that was initially something you call a primary. And uh, I think you ran away, uh, came up over five to seven hundred votes more than the closest person to you. Uh, did that give you any, any incentive to say, wow, they like me, they want me? <laughs> you know it did. I, I said, well, I can do this when I saw that I was successful or that successful in the primary. And so it gave me more confidence as I uh, went into the general election, uh, which was in that, that following November. The primary voting was in May, and it... Uh, You know, I was actually elated. Uh, My committee members, my husband, my other family members, uh, they were, you know, very supportive. And uh, they said, "Uh, you're on your way. You're on your way to being an elected official. So I I said, uh, I'm going to give it my best shot. Right. Okay. so I know you've been on the county commission for for a while now. But uh, just tell me, what do county commissioners do? Well, uh, they're the governing body for the county, uh, and what we do is we decide how your property tax dollars and sales tax dollars are spent, Uh, and they are generally spent on the schools, uh, the um, the, uh, human uh, resources, and uh, also we uh, do the uh, EMS and uh, those different uh, public uh, commodities that we really need. And so we decide how to spend that money for those entities. Okay. You are the, uh, uh, I guess, the first African-American female elected to the county commissioner. How did that make you feel? Well, I I felt good about it, uh, but I didn't really put a a lot of time in thinking about it. Uh, What I really... Uh, thought about is the job that was ahead. Uh, I wanted to make sure that I could perform uh, the duties that were, that entailed that position. So uh, that actually is where my uh, most of my thought processes went. Um, but you know, being the first, uh, I always think about uh, the young folks that are watching, uh, that are engaged. Uh, it will give them the same incentive that I got from President Obama, that it is doable. So that's actually the approach that I took. Mm-hmm. You know, the in, in the political arena, <clears throat> excuse me, mm-hmm. uh, the, the mayor of uh, Elizabeth City is a full-time job with part-time pay. <laughs> but so um, just the question that I need to say to you uh, on the job as a mayor, as, a, as an elected official, you know, you're never off. It is, it is not the fact that you can go home uh, like I do at 5 o'clock and you decide not to answer the telephone. You don't do it. But you're on the job all the time. Every event you go to, someone has some issue. And sometimes, it's, most times, it's not a good issue that they bring to you when you talk. Why did you decide to take on this awesome responsibility? <laughs> It may be because I didn't realize how awesome it is, <laughs> but um, I'm thinking, you know, the opportunity had arisen, and I uh, thought that uh, I felt pretty successful with the things that I had done as the county as a county commissioner, and I felt like that I could make a transition into uh, the position of uh, being more of a leader. Uh, Instead of, uh, you know, just, of course, sitting at the table, uh, 
I have this expression that I usually uh, say to people is that I, I really think it's time that a woman not only have a seat at the table, but to run the meeting. Mm-hmm. And I feel that uh, I, I have uh, the ability to do that. Uh, I have run uh, classrooms throughout the years. In fact, I've worked 40 plus years dealing with young adults in the classroom, and I have been pretty successful with that. Um, uh, and it, classroom manage, management is no joke uh, in order to you know teach students mathematics, and it's usually an algebra, geometry, trigonometry, senior analysis. Those are the courses that I taught. And so I had to, you know, I had to be in my best game. And and I think the students really uh, learned and they enjoyed what I did. And I had order. And I feel like I can also demand the same uh, as mayor. Mm-hmm. Yet I noted that you were on the hospital board for uh, several years did any of the, the experience on the hospital board help prepare you for being a, a commissioner or being the mayor? Indeed, it did. Uh, <clears throat> I actually was uh, on the uh, hospital authority board. They call it the Hospital Authority Board of Commissioners. So uh, I was there for six years and uh, was actually uh, instrumental in uh, getting a number of things done. Uh, but the most notable thing that I recall doing is um, getting Sentara to partnership with our hospital. Uh, hospitals were having problems um, economically wise uh, in the time of where, you know, we uh, were having problems throughout the nation uh, with um, economics. So uh, it could no longer be what we considered a standalone hospital. So we needed a stronger entity uh, to engage with. And and uh, I was on the uh, RFP task force um, deciding on uh, which hospital to uh, bring aboard and uh, partner with us. And uh, we selected Sentara. And I often told the group, uh, members of the task force, I said, you know what, um, Sentara is already in the family. We might as well just make it official because uh, we did have people going back and forth to Sentara in uh, Norfolk, Virginia, and then they would uh, sometimes have uh, their clientele or have their um, uh, medical uh, people come to Albemarle Hospital. So I think it was a great choice, and uh, it was a big undertaking uh you know, making that selection. Okay. Yes, yeah, so I know that, um, again, you know, taking on these uh, responsibilities, it's, it's a great bit of responsibility. And I know that when I ran for office the first time, you know, I had an, an issue that had to do with uh, taxes. You know, I was passionate about <laughs> what the taxes was, and I mm-hmm. wanted to change the world in terms of how we pay taxes. And of course, mm-hmm. I was unsuccessful. Mm-hmm. But When you do this, there's something that you're passionate about when you decide to run for office. You don't just decide one day I'm going to run (laughs) because I want to run. What are the issues in Elizabeth City that you're passionate about? Well, um, you know, I always want my city, my town to be a better town. Uh, And uh, I've been here all of my life. Uh, I I had a choice to leave uh, when I graduated from ECSU, I got to get that out there, Viking Pride. Um, uh, but I decided to stay. I had a job at Northeastern High School, and I really got involved with the youth. I would like to see more things here that the youth can engage in. And uh, when I say engage in, I'm talking about, I want to see if we as a council or the council can uh, get some programs that would be structured so that uh, the young folk can see, uh, t- could get some pro- pro- productivity and, uh, you know, excel right here and not leave unless, you know, they choose to leave. Uh, it's kind of, it seems like it's a daunting task, but I just feel real passionate about that. And also, Uh, The senior citizens, Uh, I feel like uh, the senior citizens, you know, there should be facilities and and um, uh, 
programs that would be targeted toward their interests and their needs, uh, separate from the youth, actually. Uh, uh, but those are the, those are some of the things I'm passionate about. And I know it takes tax dollars. I know you mentioned something about taxes. And when you say taxes, people really get all up in the, uh, you know, the air about that and, and what have you. But, you know, uh, that's one of the things that make our country great uh, is that we uh, pay into the system. And uh, when I say pay into the system, you know, we have... Um, the taxes that are going that are used to uh, promote or develop certain programs that will be beneficial to our citizens. So I just like to see more done for the youth here, rather than uh, them re, uh, uh, actually resulting to uh, joining gangs. And uh, you know, a lot of times there's so much violence, and and their lives are cut short. Uh, I just think that uh, I need to work toward uh, more of that um, in, in promoting the youth and, and the activities for them and the senior citizens, actually. Uh, and there are other things that I would uh, like to do as well, but that's pressing right now for me. All right. Let's pause for a moment. We'll be right back with more Around the Town with Heads Brown. Elizabeth City State University promises to be the most affordable choice for a high-quality university education. The North Carolina Promise Tuition Plan will reduce the tuition cost of attending ECSU to only $500 per semester for in-state students. It all begins fall 2018. Learn more online at ecsu.edu slash ncpromise. Elizabeth City State University. Come to discover, leave to conquer. You are now listening to Around the Town with Hez Brown. Welcome back to Around the Town with Hez Brown. My guest today is Betty J. Parker. You know, you mentioned the, the, the senior citizen. There has been a lot of writing recently. There has been a lot of discussions about Elizabeth City uh, really being uh, a place for retirees, mm. uh, a place that people would want to come and live here because it's comfortable and I think that was a recent uh, report that Elizabeth City uh, ranked high in terms of uh, senior citizens. Uh, what's your thoughts about that? I do think so, because, you know, we, we're considered the harbor of hospitality. Uh, they're great, uh, but, you know, the demographics are good here. Uh, and, and we do have a lot of people retiring back here. Some have gone off uh, so that they could have... Uh, better jobs, uh, and now they're returning home. And then there are others who just, I uh, say, I guess, get on the internet and they see uh, Elizabeth City and they see the water and they see how the close proximity to the beaches and what have you. Uh, and they think it's a, a great place to retire to. But uh, I talked with um, a, a senior citizen uh, Sunday before last at church. Uh, she had come up to me and uh, uh, this was not my home church. I was visiting a church, and she said, um, uh, you know, my husband and I, we retired here, and uh, we, we really like this town, this city, but they don't have some of the things that we had uh, where I came from, and unless you get those things, uh, uh, we'll probably have to leave. I said, look, I'm going to work toward those things. You just give me a list. Uh, and she says, one thing about it, it's a nice bakery. And you know, sometimes we don't think about those things, you know, that people are accustomed to coming from the larger towns. Um, uh, and so what I told her is just, you know, if I, I'm fortunate enough to become mayor, I said, I will listen to all of, uh, of the citizens and, and uh you know, take a list of those things and see what is doable. Some things may not be doable immediately, but they can be a, a list of things to do to make sure that uh, we accommodate you. Uh, so don't don't consider leaving just yet. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, the next question I'm going to ask you probably uh, uh, is a, it's a tough question to answer, but we're going to ask it anyway. Uh, there has been, there is a perception, I think that's the correct word, there's a perception that the city council members 
don't get along, that, that they fight all the time, and that, you know, it's bad for the community. If someone's just sitting in a hotel room and they see what happened on the city council, they would not consider moving the business here. They would not consider themselves moving here. Do you have any, any, any plans or any thoughts about how to change that image if the perception is true? Well, if that perception is true, uh, remember, pe- perception is just about everything. Sometimes, especially if you do not know that particular town and really know the people. Um, it, you know, there is a way to disagree and not be disagreeable. I know you've heard that many times. Uh, some uh, council members, I think, seem to very be very passionate about uh, what they believe in, which is which can be a good thing, but sometimes uh, we uh, portray uh, more uh, less uh, bitterness and anger to people afar and even home people. Uh, it doesn't mean that that person or that counselor uh, uh, has that type of personality, but it may be the perception, and so. Uh, Part of my plan, actually, is very generic. Uh, I have been, um, uh, you know, I have a background in mathematics, problem solving, and some in conflict resolution. And so uh, I have been, uh, I started to say, accused of being able to bring people together uh, and, um, you know, just talk with them and uh, let them know that, uh Let's just talk about this. And and uh, there is such a word as compromise. Uh, and and uh, the domain, of course, that you may be betraying in public, you know, like uh, my mom used to say, uh, if you're going to act up, you do it here in this house and not when you leave out of here. Let's go on and resolve what it has to be resolved before we go out in public. And I think that uh, we can do that. If I can talk one-on-one with those who are really passionate about an issue, uh, we may be able to, once they uh, we get into the meeting, uh, that after having, you know, blown off steam with me <laughs> in my office, uh, and then we're able to talk about it, uh, then when we go out and really talk with one another as a group, it will be more um, uh, palatable. So... Uh, I think uh, talking to people and letting them know what we see, how it does not appear that you're you're doing uh, constructive, uh, you know, uh, making constructive decisions and and that you're really trying to uh, get a point across, uh, but you, you're not doing it in a way that people are going to be receptive. Uh, I think it'll make a difference. But it, like I said, it's very generic, but it has worked. Now, you know, as I told you, I've worked with young adults, and uh, they can get very hyped. And uh, I have been successful with, you know, talking to them. And, uh, you know, once you get them separated with uh, from whomever they, they're having problems with, uh, we talk about it, and they have come out shaking hands and actually loving one another. And one of the things that, that, that I always say, think about justice, you know. Uh, justice is what love looks like in public. So what you want to do is, you know, just give everyone a chance. You know, give them a chance to talk, and then you say what you have to say, and then at some point in time we may have to compromise. Okay. You know, I think that, uh, and that's, uh, you sound like a mediator. Oh, <laughs> my goodness. <laughs> And that's and that's a good thing. <laughs> okay, uh, but um, that as you as you know as uh, as we travel this road, uh, there are some uh, bumps in the road as we go along, and this is just a uh, you know not just a gospel of Hezekiah Brown saying this, but one of the issues I think that has really resonated in the community that has caused even more people to run for office. You know, someone listened to Barack Obama and said, yeah, what you need to do, you don't like what's going on, you know, get some signatures and go out and do it. Right. But the issue around the utility, uh, the rates, the the cutoffs, and all those things, and uh, all those things are out there. Do you have any thoughts about, given the fact that you're sitting in the seat as the mayor, do you have any thoughts about what you can do to 
help that situation or help that problem that have encouraged and influenced so many folks to decide to run for office on that one issue? <laughs> well, you know, that's a money issue. And anytime it deals with the pocketbook and the pocketbook of the, the customers, you know, that can be kind of a, a red hot issue. Uh, and, you know, and, and, you know, sometimes uh, the customer will not look beyond their own uh you know, situation as far as it, what it has cost them uh, into what may have caused the problem. And uh, the root of the problem, I'm not sure about because I'm still an outsider looking in and I'm still just getting uh, what is told to me. To actually make a good assessment, I have to be on the inside. And that's what I'm looking forward to, getting on the inside and uh, really getting to the crux of the matter. But as far as me personally, uh, my husband and I, our utility bill is, uh, excuse me, is improving. Uh, it seems to be back on track. Uh, it's uh, they seem to be getting um, a, a you know getting back under control, uh, but there are still people who have who are not satisfied. Um, now uh, I'm thinking, you know, it it appeared to be a real debacle. Uh, and uh, to to get it back on track and get people more confident in uh, you really uh, doing a job with this utility bill uh, situation, uh, they're going to have to feel it. You know, they're going to have to feel that it's working now. And, and to build the confidence up again, you know, it's, it, it's going to be a task to do. Uh, but I think that... Probably in the beginning, and notice I say probably because I don't know. Again, I'm on the outside looking in, but I have gone to many city council meetings here recently, and of course I've watched on TV. Um, it appears that it may have been that uh, when uh, initially there appeared to be a problem coming uh, wherein there was not going to be a compatibility between two uh, technology systems, which I'm not really savvy <laughs> on, and nor uh, most of the customers. But it appears that initially, when you found that you were not going to get a true handle on it, is that you needed to, in some way, inform the public to kind of soften the blow uh, and then uh, let them know that you were working on it, yet th they were going to have a delay in their bills and uh, they may want to uh, uh, kind of save the money up that they, what their bill would probably generally be, you know, get an estimate so that when they got everything back on track that they would be able to uh, pay their bills. Uh, even though uh, they've given them time to... Uh, you know, set up a plan to pay, and uh, I think they deferred late payments at some point in time. Uh, people are still hurting from it, uh, and and I can understand, I can empathize. Uh, so uh, until it is totally back on track, there is going to be some ill feelings, and and there are going to be people who are going to take advantage of the system because of what happened, and we need to understand that as well. But we still have to give the people time to adjust. And uh, as I said, I would have to be on the inside uh, to determine what type of adjustments uh, that can be made. Okay. And, okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, one of the things that uh, that uh, I have noticed uh, uh, since I've been in Elizabeth City is the fact that, and this is this is a perennial question about the recreation of facilities for for young people to do, and I have to give you my take on this, and and I, I just want you touched on it earlier, but uh, there is such a, uh, I guess, an uh, allegation from people that there's nothing for children to do in Elizabeth City. And I know from my own experiences that's not true. I think that what people have to do is find the things for kids to do. That they are, is there enough? Maybe not. But what is your take on that, even with that allegation that there's nothing for children to do? You know? Well, you know, uh, there are things for uh, children to do, for uh, even young adults to do. 
but it may not be the things that they choose to do. See, uh, if it's something that they don't want to do, uh, and I know young people, they will say there is nothing to do. Uh, But I think if they uh, took time to investigate what is being offered in this town for young people, because they're off uh, a lot of times there are churches that are offering things for young people, activities on the weekend and and possibly at some point in time during the week. And of course, there are uh, the uh, the the parks and rec uh, that is offered. And uh, we've got Pal here who uh, works with the young people. But some people simply do not want to do it. They want to do, uh, they look around at other larger cities and say, where they've got this, they've got that. But what you have to do is work with what you have in your own confines. In other words, what can we do as a small town? What is being offered in a small town that will work for you? You have school activities. There are things that young people can do. Uh, I'm not saying we cannot do more, but I'm thinking that they can do more as well by seeking what we already have and, uh, you know, adapting. Um but again, there's more that we can do as a city, and, and, and I would love to see it uh, uh, come to fruition. Okay. All right, and then now just shift to, to another area uh, economic development. Uh, there are, again, uh, so many allegations about the, you know, the city itself uh, not doing uh, anything to bring uh, good paying jobs to Elizabeth City. Uh, and so, therefore, you know, there's a, a, a real, real area that also is out there in, uh, and coming. And if you're fortunate enough to be elected mayor or unfortunate enough to be elected mayor, <laughs> <laughs> you say, what do I do about these uh, these allegations? Though? Is there anything can be done to encourage companies that pay good salaries into Elizabeth City? Well, you know, I'm thinking that— uh uh, you know, we've been aware of this uh, as a town for a long while, and it's hard even for t- towns that are a little bit larger than we are uh, or larger than we are to bring in uh, the industry that we, we would like to have or they would like to have. So it is not an easy task. Uh, but uh, if we can play up our uh, the things that are, are good here in this town, uh, and as I said, we are a uh, river city here, which a lot of people will like. But uh, we, in order to attract businesses, we have to have good uh, Internet services. Uh, the, uh, we have to have, uh, uh, you know, the, the hospitals need to be good and up to standards. Uh, schools are, are here. Well, we have universities are, that are here. Uh, and right, right with uh, including Elizabeth City State University, which is a good school. Uh, but we have to market that. Um, also, we have to uh, 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 think in terms of the other, uh, the Coast Guard. I was trying to get that uh, uh, in my mind, but we have the Coast Guard here. Uh, if we market the things that we already have, people are already vested here. Uh, then we can attract others. Uh, but we have to, uh, you know, portray that we are together as a council uh, and mayor in uh, trying to uh, get these, get uh, other industries in, in this town. So, again, perception of how we are working together will make a big difference. Uh, but, again, good schools. You know, I, I saw... Uh, just the other day where they had on the front page, uh, one of our schools had been low performing. Um, that doesn't help us very much. But what will help us is to uh, uh, see what our uh, the administrators uh, and staff are doing in order to rectify uh, the low scores that we're getting. What are they doing? Are they uh, uh, attacking the problem from the standpoint of the neighborhood that the these uh, youngsters are in, and if they have an opportunity to uh, get someone to help with them with their homework, uh, just what is uh, the crux of the problem? And I think that uh, the school system 
is working very hard to make it better because schools are what people look at uh, before coming to a town. And uh, and I'm thinking that if we could get more money at, at put into the schools, uh, that that's very important uh, uh, to you know work with whatever it is that the superintendent and uh, the principals are saying needed. We have to embrace our schools. And when I say we, I'm talking about we as businesses, we as just regular citizens. Embrace it because I had read somewhere where um, I think it was uh, today's paper where uh, Mr. Eilert, who used to be a principal, uh, I think, I don't know if it was every county, but there was a county that what happened, their schools were low performing, but the entire community came together. And now they're they're some of the top schools uh, in the, the state. So and I think we can do it here in Elizabeth City. It's where we put our focus. Yes. Okay. So as we wind down, uh, I tell you, you've been very, very informative, uh, and I think in very, uh, uh, um, really, really knowledgeable about what's going on in Elizabeth City now. I know, but I just want to, you know, conclude by saying, uh, tell us when early voting start. Mm. Uh, tell us when the regular voting start. Uh, you have all. The, I don't know if you have all those those dates down. I do. But will you just <laughs> tell the audience, you know. When the early voting start, where you vote for early voting, and mm-hmm. then the regular mm-hmm. election. Mm-hmm. And then tell them again, mm-hmm. end up by telling them again why you will be, why you are the best person <laughs> to be mayor. <laughs> okay. Uh, I do know the dates. The important ones are um, registration. Uh, registration ends actually September the 15th, and you can go to the Board of Elections here on Edgewood Drive uh, to register. Um, early voting, early voting begins September the 21st and it ends October the 7th. And I do want to point out for this early voting, uh, usually, if I recall correctly, there are two Saturdays that you have an opportunity to vote. But this time there is only one Saturday. So please get out and vote, uh, people. And, and you know, uh, a lot of times races are won or, lo- won or lost during that early voting period uh, because we don't know what's going to happen on October the 10th. That is Election Day. No, 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 it's not November, as a lot of people think. I thought elections, no, no the municipal elections will be <laughs> October the 10th. So uh, in order to avoid any type of uh catastrophe or anything that may come that uh, rain or whatever it may be on that election day, try to get in during that early voting period. And again, uh, you know, I would definitely appreciate your vote. Again, my name is Betty J. Parker, and that's how it's going to appear on the ballot. I have worked uh, in this town all of my adult life, and it has been uh, primarily serving others and especially the youth. Uh, and I think this uh, will give me uh, another chance to continue to serve the people. Now, I serve them as a Pasquotain County Commissioner, uh, but I will still be serving the people as a mayor, just in a different venue. And um, I think that I will be able to make a difference uh, in working with the uh, city council because, again, uh, I am a person who like to prepare. And when I say prepare, I like to uh, be able to get a feel for what my counselors are thinking or feeling prior to going into the chambers. So, uh, again, uh, I appreciate uh, all the support that I have gotten in the community. And uh, I hope I continue to get that support. Uh, if I am fortunate enough to become your mayor, yeah, it's one thing I, that I that, that I was remiss in not asking. Is some people believe that if you get elected mayor, that you can serve as mayor and continue on the county <laughs> commissioners board? Is that is that right? You know what that you know what that would be hard to juggle to tell you the truth. But it's a good thing that it's not legal to do it. Yeah. No, I cannot serve both capacities. I would. I uh, have to give up the commissionership. But uh, I think that, uh, you know, I was uh, able to um, be elected. Uh, someone 
called me and uh, I was willing to step up to the plate and serve. So I know there's someone else that can do that. Uh, uh, you know, at one time uh, somebody said, oh, if you don't be commissioner, then who's going to take your place? Please don't hold me hostage. There are others who can do it. It is up to the citizens to get the people in place. So I would, all, if I'm, again, fortunate enough to become the Elizabeth City Mayor, I will no longer be a commissioner. But I still will be serving the people in this county and city. Okay, thank you. Uh, Ms. Betty Parker, you heard her. You know her. You heard all about her. And you understand, so you heard some of the ideas that she planned to implement in the events she's elected. Now, remember, always stay tuned to WRVS. 89.9. Thank you for listening to Around the Town with Hez Brown, recorded and produced at WRVS FM Studios on the campus of Elizabeth City State University. If you are interested in becoming an underwriter for this show, call 252 335 3985.